Welcome to the BADA video lecture. In this lecture, I'll introduce the graphics functionalities available in BADA. In this tutorial, I'll explain how to use the drawing functions, the color class, the basic graphical shapes, and the procedures to draw each shape, canvas, text, enriched text, which is a more advanced text format, the buffer and bitmap, and 3D and hardware acceleration support. I'm going to talk about 2D and 3D graphics. 2D can be achieved using a canvas, and for 3D, we'll talk briefly about OpenGL. We'll also look at the use of basic geometrical shapes, such as circles, triangles, etc., which can be drawn on the canvas. Then, we'll look at how to draw images, text, fonts. I also have some examples to demonstrate how these features can be used in small applications. And finally, we'll take a look at OpenGLES. In this lecture, the main element is the canvas, which is used to draw any object, i.e. text and bitmaps. Let's start exploring these one by one. I'll discuss the basic two-dimensional graphical shapes and how to draw these on the canvas. Now, let's look at BADA's color functions in more detail. The color class enables applications to define the color of the background and of its elements, such as rectangles. The foreground color is used for drawing the elements. The class encapsulates a color which is represented by an ARGB, alpha, red, green, blue, color model. BADA uses the ARGB 8888 color model. This means that the alpha channel is supported and each RGB channel consists of 8 bytes. The color class supports functions to get or set each channel value or all ARGB 8888 colors. In addition, the class supports a function to compare colors. In addition, the color class predefines frequently used colors for convenience. Now, let's look at some of the basic graphical shapes we'll be using with BADA graphics. In BADA, the originating point of the coordinates is the top left corner of the screen. In BADA, a few classes that support geometry functions are predefined. The first is the point class. A point represents the position of a point and contains x and y coordinates. The dimension class represents the size and contains the width and height. A rectangle is a combination of the point and dimension classes and contains the x, y, width, and height items. BADA provides various shape drawing functions. The methods have a very simple and easy to understand naming convention. The name starts with draw and is followed by the shape name. For example, the draw rectangle method will draw a rectangle. In addition, BADA supports the arc, ellipse, line, polygon, polyline, rectangle, round rectangle, and triangle drawing functions. The arguments accepted by these methods are in sync with what's needed to be drawn. For example, draw a triangle needs three points. Draw ellipse needs the coordinates of the rectangle inside which it fits, and so on and so forth. Similar to what we saw for drawing a shape, BADA provides a method to fill these shapes with a specific color. BADA provides a set of predefined colors and options to create user-defined colors, which we'll look at later in this tutorial. A filling function is supported for the ellipse, polygon, rectangle, round rectangle, and triangle shapes. In addition, you can draw a point at a specific coordinate on the screen by calling the setPixel function. The canvas is a drawable rectangular region with top, left, 
height and width attributes where you can control each pixel. The canvas provides a rectangular region to draw objects on the display device. The canvas instance is associated with a specific context. The canvas enables applications to create a background for the graphics and to draw graphic elements. The canvas contains settings that are used in the drawing operations, such as line style, line width, line color, and font. Font will be explained later. The foreground color specifies the color when a point, line, or curve is drawn on the screen. We'll look at clip bounds in a later example. The line style only supports a solid line at present. The line width determines the width of the line to be drawn. If we specify the clip bounds by using the set clip bounds function and draw an object beyond the boundary of the clip bounds, we can only see those parts of the object within the boundary of the clip bounds. The canvas also provides a function to extract a part of the canvas and copy it to another area of the canvas. This example shows the role of the clip bounds for the canvas. As you can see, clip bounds is set using the set clip bounds function, and the triangle is drawn beyond the boundary of the clip bounds. We'll look at the output now. Here, we can easily notice that the portion outside the clip bounds is not drawn. The image on the left is without clipping, and the one on the right is with clipping. This example shows the procedures to draw an object on the canvas and copy a rectangular area of the canvas to another area. At this time, by resizing the rectangle, you can implement a magnification or shrinking effect. As shown, first a filled rectangle is drawn in blue. Then the rectangle shape is drawn with a red line with a width of 5 pixels is drawn on the other side of the filled rectangle. Then text is drawn inside the filled rectangle. The canvas copy method is then used to copy the area of the rectangle passed as the first argument to the rectangular area passed as the third argument. The outcome of the source code is this figure. As you can see in this figure, a rectangular area has been magnified and copied to another point. Let's look at the drawing functions now. Drawing can be done using a form-based application. A form-based application constructs a screen by using a form and other controls. Since form and controls have drawing functions to draw their own objects, you don't usually need to draw objects. However, most forms and controls provide custom drawing options. Let's see how you can make a custom drawing in a control. Every control has the onDraw function, within which you can perform custom drawings. The onDraw function is the most important function to create a custom drawing in a control. The onDraw function is called when the control is created for the first time or when the control needs to be redrawn because its content has been changed. You can perform custom drawing in a control by adding the required drawing source code into the onDraw function. If you want to change the contents of a control within a program and to redraw the control, you have to call the request redraw function of the control. Request redraw is an asynchronous call. When the request redraw function is called, the framework calls the onDraw function for each of the controls so that the contents of the controls are drawn again. At this time, the drawing is performed through the canvas object. The canvas corresponds to the graphics context of other frameworks. Every control has a canvas and all drawings are performed through the canvas. 
Now, let's have a look at an example that implements a custom drawing for a form-based application. Of course, the first thing to do is to create a form-based application. Then, add the onDraw function to the form class. The onDraw function acquires the canvas, draws using the canvas, shows the canvas, and deletes the canvas in that sequence. Now, as you can see in this example, the onDraw function has been overridden in the form class header file. Let's look at the definition of the onDraw function. First, as I mentioned earlier, we need to acquire the canvas. Since each control has its own canvas, we can easily acquire a canvas by calling the getCanvasN function. After that, we can draw various functions using the canvas. For example, in this sample, I've drawn a colored rectangle using the fill rectangle function. When the drawing is complete, the show function of the canvas is called to show the contents of the canvas on the screen. Then the created canvas is deleted and success is returned. If this source code is executed, you'll get the screen as shown in this figure. As you can see in the example, the rectangle has been drawn with the desired position, size, and color. Let's take a look at fonts and text now. Let me introduce you to the text functions of Bada. When text is drawn on the screen, the font is the essential property. In Bada, the font is implemented as an independent class. You can get a font by creating a font class and constructing the object with a style and size. By setting the font of the canvas and drawing text using the canvas, you can output text in that font on the screen. You can specify the font name, style, and size when a font is constructed. You can get the supported font names in a list by calling the system font list n function of the font class and selecting one of the fonts in the list. Plain, italic, and bold styles are all supported. Multiple styles can be applied at a time through the bitwise or operation. You can set the font size by specifying points. In addition, you can set the character space, strike out, and underline properties of the font. The font class also provides functions to get the font metric, such as the left, right, bare, ascender, descender, and max width height. The image here explains font attributes. Let's look at these. The ascender specifies the part of the character above the origin. The descender specifies the part of the character below the origin. The character space specifies the character space of the current instance of the font class. The face name is a set of one or more fonts in one or more sizes designed with stylistic unity. The left bear is the horizontal distance from a character's origin to its leftmost extent. This value can be negative or positive. The right bear is the horizontal distance from a character's rightmost extent to the character's advance width. This value can also be positive or negative. The maximum height specifies the maximum height of the current instance of the font class. The maximum width specifies the maximum width of the current instance of the font class. The size specifies the font size of the current instance of the font class. The text extent is the width and height of the font used in the specified text. This example shows you how to construct a font and draw text on the screen using the constructed font. A font is constructed by specifying the style and size. By setting the underlying property of the font, 
the font is changed to an underlined font. Then the font is set to the canvas. Now we can display text on the screen using the constructed font. The enriched text enables applications to support text with various styles, such as fonts, colors, and layouts. An enriched text instance consists of several text elements instances, each of which encapsulate the text attributes, such as the actual string, font style, and color. Enriched text supports a layout. It enables the display of text with a layout by specifying properties such as the vertical alignment, horizontal alignment, text wrapping, line spacing, and text abbreviation items. In the enriched text function, you can use a combination of text element objects to change the text, such as the foreground color, background color, vertical and horizontal alignment, text wrap, line spacing, and font. The text can be abbreviated in case the text size exceeds the dimension of the enriched text. It also supports adding bitmaps along with the text. The enriched text can be used to represent a linked text with the specified link information and also get the link information from its instance. This is an example of enriched text. As you can see, to use enriched text, I have created and constructed an enriched text object. Then I specified the horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, text wrap style, and text abbreviation enabled properties. After that, I've added text elements to the enriched text. First, a text string element is necessary, and then we can specify the color and font. Here, I've created a few elements with different colors. When you add these text elements to the enriched text and draw the text on the screen, you can see the result as in this figure. As you can see, the text string is aligned as specified, and the part of the text string that extends beyond the boundary is cut off. Next, I'm going to discuss bitmaps and buffers. A bitmap commonly refers to a roster image. In Bada, a bitmap image can be created in different ways. A bitmap image can be created by copying a part of another bitmap image. Another method creates a bitmap image by copying a part of a canvas. A bitmap image can also be created by converting the byte buffer data into a bitmap, or an image file can be decoded to a bitmap image by using the OSP media image class. Alternatively, you can create an empty bitmap image. The most common way of creating a bitmap image is drawing a bitmap image on the screen using the canvas. The canvas can be used to rotate, enlarge, or shrink a bitmap image. You can get the information of a bitmap image through the buffer info class mentioned earlier by locking the bitmap image. The canvas provides many bitmap drawing functions. We have a function to draw a bitmap image specifying the position on the screen a function to scale a bitmap, and functions to rotate or flip bitmap images. Let's look at these one by one. The draw bitmap method, which accepts a point as the first argument and the bitmap as the second, draws the bitmap without any scaling. And the first argument point is used as the top left point for that bitmap to draw. To draw a scaled bitmap, we can use two methods. In the first method, a rectangle is specified, and the bitmap is drawn at the exact size of the rectangle. In the second method, we need to specify the destination rectangle, the source rectangle, and the source bitmap object. 
Here, the area of the source rectangle specified by the source rectangle is drawn to the area specified by the destination rectangle. To rotate the image, we need to specify the point to draw the bitmap, the pivot, which is the center of the rotation, and the degree which specifies the degree of rotation. To flip the image along with the point to draw, the bitmap flip direction is specified. The flip direction can be horizontal or vertical. This example shows how to create a bitmap from a canvas and draw the bitmap using the canvas. First, we have drawn a text and a filled rectangle with the color blue on the canvas and then shown it. In order to create a bitmap of what is drawn on the canvas, first, allocate a bitmap object and construct the object with the source canvas and the desired rectangle. This would create a bitmap of the specified rectangle, which contains what was drawn on the canvas. Then, that bitmap is drawn on the canvas at the specified rectangle, and the canvas is shown. As a result, you can see the effect of capturing a part of the screen and drawing it on the screen. Here we'll see the loading of a bitmap from a file using the image class. First, we allocate the image object and construct it. In order to get a bitmap object, the decodeN method of the object class is used with the image path to be loaded and the required pixel format. In order to load the bitmap from the file, the app resource get bitmap n method can be used as well. More will be explained about the app resource in the SDK and app tutorials. After we have the bitmap object, we have drawn it here as it is by specifying the point. And then a scaled image is drawn by specifying the rectangle coordinates. The output would look like this. Bada provides a nine-patched image that's widely used in user interfaces. A nine-patched image consists of nine subsections. Some of the sections are scalable and some are not. This type of image is generally used for buttons with an image background. As you can see in the figure, the gray part of the image is the part that's scaled when the image is enlarged or shrunk. The other bright parts are the parts that are not scaled, even if the image is enlarged or shrunk. The shape of the edges of these parts remain the same so that the outline of the image can be maintained. The Buffer Info class contains information about the buffer. In particular, the class contains information about the buffer of a canvas or the buffer of a bitmap image. This information includes the bit per pixel that describes how many bits have been used for a pixel, the pixel format that describes the format of the pixel values, the width and height of a buffer, the pointer to an array where the actual buffer is stored, and the pitch that describes how many bytes have been used for a scan line. Let's have a look at more examples. The first example explains dragging an image. The drag image example explained here shows a picture and allows the user to drag it using a touch event. To achieve this, first a form is created. The touch listeners are added. And finally, in the onDraw method, the image is drawn. Here we can see the variables and listeners will use. The class is derived from the form and iTouch event listener interface. The iTouch event listener interface provides callbacks for touch events. The variable initial offset is used as a vector from the origin of the picture, and the variable position is used to keep track of the current picture position. The variable moving will be used to store the state if the image is moving or not. The onDraw method is overridden. This will be called whenever the platform needs to be redrawn. The callbacks onTouch released, onTouch long pressed, etc. notifies the application about different touch related events. 
In the on-initializing method, the touch event is registered using add touch event listener, and the current form is specified as a listener by passing this as an argument. The initial position is set to 100, 100. As the image is not moving, the moving variable is set as false. The bitmap object also needs to be created in on initializing. Once a user touches the screen, the on touch pressed callback will be called. In the touch pressed callback, we first check if the touch is within the bitmap area. If yes, the offset is calculated and the moving variable is set to true. The point PT passed to the touch pressed released callback specifies the point when the touch was pressed released. Using the offset value we calculated here and similarly in the on touch released callback, we'll be drawing our bitmap in the on draw callback. Here in the on draw callback, the image will be drawn based on the calculation in the touch related callbacks. First, we get the canvas and clear it to erase the previous contents. Then, the bitmap is drawn at the position without scaling. It's necessary to delete the canvas after drawing is completed, or it'll lead to memory leakage. Complete the application, build and run it, and you're ready with your application. Your screen will look like the one shown in this figure. You can drag and see the results. The next example is based on animations. Here again, the application is a form-based application. This time, a timer is used to change the position of the image. This code shows the initialization of the class and the declaration of the timer. The timer will determine the time interval after which the image will be moved to another location on the form. The onDraw function is overridden for custom drawings. The onTimerExpired callback will be called after the time which is set for the timer has elapsed. In the onInitializing callback, we initialize the data and initialize other necessary components. As shown here, first we construct the image class and then get the bitmap object by loading the image file using the decode n method. We set the vertical position variable vpos to 0. Then we create the timer object, construct it, and set the timer value to 50 milliseconds. Any other suitable value can be used for the timer interval. The on timer expired callback will be called after 50 milliseconds, as we had set 50 milliseconds in the on initializing method. Once the timer expires, we increase the vertical position, and here we have increased it by 0 0.05, though again, any other suitable value can be selected. The timer is started again so that the on timer expired event keeps coming every 50 milliseconds. The method request redraw will force the on draw event to be called so that the bitmap can be drawn. It's necessary for the application to release all the allocated memory. So here, the bitmap object is deleted and the timer is stopped and deleted. In the on draw callback, the image will be drawn. First, we get the canvas using get canvas n and clear it. Here, as shown, the sin function from the math namespace is used to give a vertical up and down movement. The sin function uses the vpos variable in its formula to get the new y coordinate for the bitmap. Then, using these coordinates, the bitmap is drawn using the draw bitmap method. The canvas object is deleted to release the memory. Bata supports 3D graphics rendering. This will be explained next. Bata supports OpenGL ES 1.1 1 
and 2.0. OpenGL ES 1.1 emphasizes the hardware acceleration of the API. It provides enhanced functionality, improved image quality, and optimizations to increase performance while reducing memory bandwidth usage to save power. OpenGL ES 2.0 emphasizes a programmable 3D graphics pipeline with the ability to create shader and program objects and the ability to write vertex and fragment shaders in the OpenGL ES shading language. EGL handles graphics context management, surface buffer binding, and rendering synchronizations, and enables high performance accelerated mixed mode 2D and 3D rendering using other Chronos APIs. A timer based approach can be used to render the objects. The implementation of a timer is similar to what we've seen earlier. In the sample code here, I've shown the initialization of the EGL display. Here, the form is made the surface. To set the EGL display to show the graphics on the screen, two methods are used. EGL underscore default underscore display in the EGL get display method sets the EGL display to draw the graphics on the display, while the EGL initialize method is used to initialize the selected display. Once the EGL configuration is set, the EGL create window surface method creates an on-screen rendering surface over the bottom screen. By specifying the third argument as EGL native window type underscore p form the forms area will be used as the open GLES rendering area the open GL version on the device can be checked easily using system class methods different devices have different hardware specifications for rendering graphics Shown in the code snippet is how to get the open GLES version. The system info get value method takes a key string and returns the value for that key as a string. Here, open GLES version is the key and the value is set to the output parameter, the GLES version string. In this lecture, I introduce the Bada graphics functions. The canvas allows you to draw objects on controls and provides various geometric primitives. In addition, I introduce the functions to display text on the screen as well as some bitmap functions.